my wife, Ann Esselstyn, is responsible for all the recipes in the book. I never would have really been able to succeed in any of this without Ann. And she is not exactly a shrinking violet. Uh, she taught social studies and English to sixth grade for about 28 years. And uh, I think you're going to find that as there was a, a gentleman in California, after Ann got through making her presentation once, he stood up and he said in front of her, he said, that's the finest presentation I've ever heard about plant-based nutrition. He said, you're like Julia Childs on steroids. <laughs> <laughs> just, I'm just curious. if I, I, I'm going to use the microphone, but if I don't for a few minutes, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. I think <laughs> um, my husband, as you know, wrote prevent and reverse heart disease. And a few years after that, our son Rip wrote The Engine 2 Diet. And uh, when he wrote this book, he wanted to make a distinction between my husband's book and his. So he called his program Plant Strong. And he dubbed my husband's program Plant Perfect. And so what I want to do today is give you sort of 10 plant perfect little points. But basically, the difference between these two is that there is no meat and no dairy and no oil in both. That's the same center pool. But Rips is a little looser with, because my husband's is directed at heart disease, Rip is more directed toward everybody. And, although truly, my husband thinks everybody should eat his way. <laughs> but there are no nuts, no avocado, uh, less uh, soy products for my husband's Plant Perfect program. So, I, I just want to start with one thing. And that is, I don't know how all of you are eating, if you're all eating plant-based. But if you're not, and if you're about to start, I just want to give you a little bit of advice. Do not go out there and try to find a world of vegan meat. You will not ever, all you're going to do is move from eating the standard American diet to eating a junk food vegan diet because that stuff is all basically junk food. You don't know what any of the ingredients, I mean, they're all strange ingredients or they're very highly processed soy. So, don't try and find fake meat. There are a few, I mean, it's, you can easily make nice veggie burgers yourself. And, and, and just know when you go and maybe do that on the 4th of, well, you don't have the 4th of July. 1st <laughs> of July. <laughs> Uh, that, you know, so what? But the other thing is, there is no, there's no substitute for cheese. Sorry, but there isn't. If you go out there and look at the ingredients in all the cheeses that are sort of soy-based, there are two things in them. Oil, or often casein. And casein is that protein in dairy that you want to avoid because it's a cancer promoter. So don't try and do that. Now, I do have to tell you one thing. So last year, I think that Brussels sprouts were really popular. And, so, and, and this year, uh, carrots have sort of gotten a, got a craze. So I ran across um, a recipe for carrots. Heirloom carrots, cooked in goat butter, topped with hay, and then ignited. Which gave me the idea, and I want to just pass this on to you of an amazing carrot dog, you know, instead of a hot dog. <laughs> so this is what I did. I found some carrots that looked like hot dogs. It's amazing, but you can. They need to be similar <laughs> sizes. I boiled it until it was 10 minutes, until it was hot dog, exactly soft. Then I cut it in half, no, cut it in half, and I, I found some liquid smoke, and I covered it with liquid smoke. And then I put it in the panini. It's, it's good. 
I put it in the panini, in the panini you know, the panini pan. I put two of them there and then two slices of bread and took them out. I surprised my husband. He didn't know what I was doing. And I put carrot, I got my mustard and ketchup, and I put some arugula. And um, I tell you, it was so good that I don't think I'd ever want to eat a hot dog again. I mean, even a fake one. So anyway, I'm just passing on that little crazy thing. But first of all, in my 10 points, my 10th point is to read ingredients. And as I talk, I'm going to try and show you why. But the first thing that I want to talk about now is no oil. And I'm talking about it first because honestly, I think it's the easiest. I want to get it out of the way. Go home, get rid of your oil. What are you going to use? Any liquid works. Water, wine, beer, uh, uh, vegetable broth. And I know that you can easily make your own vegetable broth. It's lovely to be able to find vegetable broth. And I noticed I went, what is the name of that store that begins with S? Sobeys. Sobeys? Sobeys. 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 And I noticed that they carry the Pacific low sodium vegetable broth. And in, at home, we have something I really like. And I don't know, is this Kitchen Basics <coughs> unsalted vegetable stock is here? You can get it in the <laughs> Well, anyway. But anyway, these are really nice vegetable broths that don't have a lot of sodium because all of the vegetable stocks, all the little cubes out there, I've never found anything that I thought was good. For instance, here's one, a vegetable, a vegan vegetable bouillon cube with sea salt. It looks perfectly, you know, like it would be good. Well, guess what? <laughs> its first ingredient is sea salt and the second is palm oil and it's got 1,050 milligrams of sodium just for half a cube. So read the ingredients in these vegan, I don't know anything. You can either you make your own or get some that don't, but they're, they're sort of scary for the amount of sodium. So anyway, when you're going to cook onions, Onions have a lot of liquid, so you put them in the pan and let them go, not high heat, and they will begin to brown. Add liquid as you need to. But, um, and mushrooms cook on their own. They're amazing. Then you can just add bits of liquid if you need it. And uh, garlic, unlike those two, needs some liquid in the pan. But you just don't need that oil. Now, baking. Instead of oil, you can use applesauce, apple butter, baby food prunes, uh, some banana. And speaking of baby food prunes, sorry, um, this is Gerber's baby food prunes. That it's the perfect size. It's one of there's two here that will make just the right amount that for half a cup. On the same shelf next to this, you will find organic baby food prunes. Now, what do you think is the difference? And it's not sugar. On the organic baby food prunes, there is tuna oil added. Now, there is no way of knowing this kind of thing unless you read ingredients, even on things that you might not normally think you would need to. So any, all of these things will work in baking. Uh, when you bake, honestly, you use whole wheat flour. You can use, um, uh, and I don't recommend doing much baking, but, but on those happy birthday occasions, go for it. Um, but, but when you bake, it's never going to be as fluffy and light and high as before. You can also, by the way, instead of... Um, egg. Use flaxseed meal, flaxseed, one tablespoon of flaxseed and three of water equals an egg white and that will sort of help. But when we were doing, when I was doing the recipes in this book, I was determined, you know, we really should have a carrot cake. Well, I made a thousand carrot cakes and they were always, they never just were right. 
I finally, I'm tired of this, so I renamed it a carrot cookie cake. <laughs> Perfect. Because, you know, all of those things taste good. It's just that sometimes they don't look like the things that, you know, you can go out and buy in those fluffy. So anyway, the, 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 the no oil is not hard. The place that we originally found it hardest was the kind of salad dressing that we loved that didn't have any oil. So the thing that made the difference for us, and we were just lucky in Cleveland because there was a company called Sahara Cuisine that made hummus. Now you all know hummus is basically uh, chickpeas, lemon, and garlic, and traditionally uh, 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 tahini, and often olive oil. This company happened to make a lot of different kinds of hummus, but two of theirs, they made with no tahini, which is ground sesame seeds, it's very fatty, and also um, no oil. And so this became our mayonnaise. Now it's very easy to make your own hummus, and you can make it to taste any way you'd like. And often without using tahini, it's not as smooth, <coughs> but you can put in nutritional yeast, you can put in um, some cannellini beans. I mean, you can do things to make it good. But hummus became our mayonnaise, so it was just wonderful to discover that. And it's also now the basis of our um, salad dressing. So I have a couple tablespoons of hummus. I will take some mustard. I will take some balsamic vinegars, of some balsamic vinegar, and then I might take an orange and cut it in half, cut out the sections, and squeeze the juice. Anyway, salad dressing is sort of up to what you like, but I, I hope that you will all go home and do one thing. Find a salad dressing that you like that doesn't have oil, because it's going to make such a difference for all of you. I mean, everybody, you know, we're, as we get older, it's sort of hard to not gain weight, and if you take that oil out, I mean, that's so many of your calories. So anyway, that, that was great for us. So I hope that all of you can find some salad dressings that you love. By the way, uh, my husband probably mentioned this. There are, you know, uh, when I grew up, I thought you had vinegar to make Easter eggs. And that's about it. I now love vinegar so much that I, I'm embarrassed to tell you how much I put it on everything. But this is a vinegar that we discovered, and it's mostly online, and it's called, made by a company called the Olive Tap. And the Olive Tap makes olive oil and balsamic, and, and balsamic vinegars, and they are infused vinegars. Some of them are their traditional, many of them are infused, for instance, with Tang there's a tangerine one. There is um, a black currant one that we love. There is lemon. There is even a chocolate one. And I mean, I don't put the chocolate on our salads, but you know what? <coughs> and uh, the most amazing dessert is to make banana or mango soft serve. And you can do it by putting frozen mangoes or bananas in a strong blender. Or there's a wonderful machine called a Yonana. Any of you heard of Yonana? You can get it on Amazon, and it's uh, it, and you put a frozen banana in, and it literally comes out like banana soft serve. It's stunning, mm -hmm. but a little chocolate balsamic on top of that is wonderful. Or even on fresh strawberries, it's delicious. So, um, oh. So these vinegars are just wonderful. So many of Essie's patients, my husband's patients, just use this on their salad. Um, but because, as I think he's talked about, eating lots of greens, greens are transformed by these balsamic vinegars into something that's crazily delicious. So you're going to have no oil. You are going to eat tons and tons of greens and all the other vegetables but I, uh, with a huge emphasis on greens and 
kale is one of the best greens. Now this is a pathetic <laughs> bunch of kale that I got today. And when I asked for anything better, they finally said I could have this free. <laughs> but what I want to show you is the thing about kale is that there's a big fat stem in kale which I think impedes it being sort of like spinach. So, if you hold the kale in this hand and take the other and pull, you remove the stem and you're left with this lovely little handful of really spinach with heft. So, um, I love, I love uh, kale in any kind of a way, and I would just put this um, into a pot, into a boil water, boiling water and um, into a pot of boiling water and cook it for five minutes, six minutes, just until it's tender to your taste. But I want to show you something that I, just, I learned to do this summer that I absolutely love. So uh, here is kale cut up. Now one of the things that people are doing these days is there's lots of kale salads. I think kale is too stiff to have in a salad. So, people have been using avocado. Thank you. People have been using avocado. But I had the idea this summer, how about using some hummus? So into the, into the um, kale, I simply put the hummus and then you massage it. And you just massage it. And you massage it. And it, I tell you, it gets so good and tender. And then if you want to be quick, you can just put some lemon juice and some, you know, cut cherry tomatoes in half, and uh, it's something delicious. And what I ended up doing, I brought a towel from our room. <laughs> it's also really good with mango, cut mango and lime juice. That's wonderful. You know in the summer, and I know it, there is summer, <laughs> and in the summer it gets so hot that the last thing you want to do is turn the stove on. So this is such a cool way to eat kale when, uh, this is such a great way to eat kale. Now there are lots of different kinds of kale. and. I just, I just found that kind here. But you know what? And I think I heard from somebody here that you can go grow kale all winter here. I mean, kale is stunning. Kale and collards. I mean, I just picked kale two days ago out of our garden in Cleveland. Our weather is just like yours. So, I mean, grow it. <laughs> now, this is, these are collards. And uh, these look, looked a little better in the store than this. Kale. But collards have got the, always got that huge fat stem. And it's just the same with them. Uh, you just pull and you've got this handful of great, just, just tear it up and it's delicious. Cook them all together separately. But one of the things that I love about collards is this leaf. To use this leaf as if it were a wrap. Now, I want to give you two ideas of using these collard leaves. This, this is a collard sushi. Oh, it's awesome. <laughs> so, you fill this with hummus just down the center. And then I would put some chopped green onions and some cilantro. And then some red pepper strips and cucumber strips and maybe bok choy strips. And then lots and lots of lemon and lemon zest. I love lemon. And then roll this up into a sausage shape and cut it into little collard sushis. And it's delicious. I mean, you can fill it with things you like. Now, another fabulous thing to do with this wonderful kale leaf, collard leaf is to maybe cook some Sweet, sweet potato, different vegetables, black beans, and fill this and make a collard burrito. So you put some pasta sauce in the bottom of a pan, you fill your burrito, I mean your collard leaves, 
and then you simply fold them up into a little collared burrito and you put about six of them in your pan and top it with pasta sauce and then on top of that you put something wonderful and I meant to mention it earlier when I was talking about no cheese because although there's no nothing like <coughs> the cheese that you know nutritional yeast maybe comes the closest how many of you have seen the movie, Forks Over Knives? Oh, a lot of you. Well, Forks Over Knives, um, there is a woman then that you may remember. Her name was Sandera, and she is the one who went into Walmart, and I called her and said, don't eat that. She was, had diabetes. She has five children, single. I mean, she had... She had never eaten anything but barbecue and green beans, and she became my husband's patient. And when she had lunch at our house, she told me later that she ha it was the hardest thing, but she couldn't stand the food. So, but one of the things she did tell me is that what she learned by changing what she was eating that she had to try everything she ate at least three times before she could even begin to like it. So the reason I'm telling you this now is that when I first tasted nutritional yeast, I really didn't like it. But now, I try, I try and make myself not put it on things. So the next thing I would do if you're making the collard burritos would be to put some nutritional yeast on top. And you might mix that with some bread crumb, whole wheat breadcrumbs. The panko, do you have that here? That you could, they come in whole wheat. But anyway, and bake that. And you know what? You don't know that you don't have some kind of a bready wrap. It's delicious. So you can do all kinds of great things with collards and just eating them plain, filling your life with them. Now here is uh, Swiss chard, and this is a really nice bunch of Swiss chard. I love Swiss chard because you just cut it up, the stems are soft, put it in. You know, I'm sure you eat a lot of soup here. I mean, don't even think of eating a soup that isn't half greens of some kind. And this is a great one because it, it melts pretty quickly. And there is nothing as nice as beets. I love beet greens, and I don't know if you all eat a lot of beets and beet greens, but you should start. And my latest thing, and I'm going to tell you because I, I can't get enough of it, is I boil the beets until they're soft, and then I cook the greens. Either you can boil them, you can uh, just stir fry them with some garlic and mushrooms if you choose, and then I chop up the beets and put them in a bowl, and put the beet greens on top, and I make a little sauce of two tablespoons of Dijon mustard and two tablespoons of water. And my husband isn't here. I'll tell you one teaspoon of maple syrup. <laughs> and I sort of heat that up and sprinkle that on top. It is amazingly delicious. But anyway, you can eat these any way you choose, but eat them. Fill your life with them. And I don't know if you all eat a lot of bok choy, but I found this little bit of baby bok choy and I, isn't that so nice mm -hmm. and you know bok choy is great I just love to cut it up put it in a salad it's wonderful in a stir fry and um, if the little bigger ones you can cut it like celery and use it like carrots and celery and bok choy it's great now let's say that you're having chili and it's all brown and you have there's no green in sight but you remember that you always keep these three hearts of romaine in your refrigerator because you know as i know they never die they somehow seem to last forever so you pull out one of your hearts of romaine and you simply twist off the bottom and now you have this lovely little handful of romaine lettuce that you can use as a scoop or not to eat with your chili. One of the things that we do when we go, when we drive now on long drives is that I take romaine 
and hummus, and we just drive and dip and eat, and it's great. So, there are just tons to do with all these greens. If you're cooking, for instance, pasta, whole wheat pasta, and the whole needs to be in front of wheat so you know that it's not white flour. It takes seven minutes to cook pasta. After three or four minutes, you have cut up into, into bite-sized pieces, kale, collards, you put those in the boiling pasta water and let them boil with the pasta, and then you drain it, and you have it you have a meal all in one after you've added a pasta sauce. I could not find any pasta sauces here that didn't have oil added. We have some at home, but um, you may have them. But you know what? Pasta sauce is so easy to make that you can easily all make your own. So fill your life with all of these greens. Now, my third, my third thing that I want you to do is to eat oats. Eat oats. I don't care how. You can eat them as oatmeal. I don't personally like oatmeal, um, but it doesn't matter as long as they're oats. Three reasons. Oats help reduce cholesterol. The oats help to reduce inflammation. And third, the more oats you eat, they're toast responsive. So find a way to have them for breakfast. My husband, I want to tell you about his breakfast. He loves, and we, we all love, just plain oats. The old-fashioned, not the quick cooking, old-fashioned oats. We use them as if they were a cold cereal and put them into a bowl. And then he would put either chia, these are chia seeds, or flaxseed meal. And both of these are our um, hat work for your omega-3. So he would put a tablespoon of that on his cereal. And then a banana, blueberries, um, whatever, raspberries, whatever is in season or around. And then he loved, this is my coolest trick, he loves grape nuts. So he would put, some, there are a few cereals that we get, and I don't know if you get them here. Ezekiel products, I think yeah. you get. Ezekiel makes something, uh, Kashi makes something, uh, grape nuts. They're all grape nutty. He'll put some of those for crunch on. And then he might put on some sh little shredded Wheaties. These are nice, and I suspect you get these, don't you? Um, these are nice, and they're nice just for a snack. And, and the only thing in them is whole wheat. So that is great. And then on top of all that, he will put an alternative milk. And it happens to be that his favorite alternative milk is something called oat milk. But uh, uh, probably the best milk possible out there is the uh, unsweetened almond milk. And I saw that you have this, uh, I know, and I think you also may have the oat. There are a num number of other alternative milks out there. But read the ingredients. All rice milks add oil, all of them. Um, so, and then if you get the unsweetened, you know, if you get the low, the no fat soy milk, they add cane juice, which is just sugar. And then some of the other regular soy milks are quite high in fat because all soy products are 40% fat. I mean, edamame, all of them are like that. So just know what you're doing. But anyway, that's his cereal. And I mean, it was a huge bowl that he makes. And he would go off to surgery at 6 in the morning and wouldn't be finished till 3, and it would last him. Now, I want to tell you what I like. Two things. One, I like to just take the plain oats like he does, put them in a bowl. You're not going to believe this. Then I take red grapes, cut them in half, and that's it. No, some chia or flax. And with every bite of oats, I have one half of a red, wet, sweet grape. It's delicious. Mm -hmm. But I have got a new thing that I am passionate about, and I think all of you would love this in this cold weather, because I uh, do find that steel-cut oats aren't quite so mushy as oatmeal, so they're a little chewy. So I make banana milk. 
Now let me tell you how to do this. One banana, one cup of water, one teaspoon of vanilla and blend it up and it just turns into a regular milk. And I cook my half cup of steel cut oats in that. You have to scrape the pan a lot. As long as until it tastes until it's the right consistency for you. I like about eight or nine minutes. And I could I mean it is really good. Now you could add some frozen blueberries to that and some chia or, or flax. But I love that. Anyway, these are just some crazy ideas. There are all kinds of ways and things, but just find ways to eat oats. Now there's one other thing that is stunningly delicious. And uh, there is a woman who is a Cleveland Clinic librarian, and she has a website called the Happy Healthy Librarian. It's a blog, actually. She also is on Facebook. And she is a proponent of my husband's way of eating. And she's got, always got times of recipe ideas and new ideas, and she's right there at the forefront of every new article that comes in in all of this world. And um, she has got something that was just on her last blog. So if you ever turned in, you could get this right off. And it's called Cheesy Oats. Now, what do you think she puts in to make her be able to say cheesy? Nutritional, Nutritional yeast. yeast. And it's, it's crazily delicious. So look up the Happy Healthy Librarian. Now, uh, so you're going to eat. You're going to have no oil. You're going to eat lots and lots of greens. You're going to eat oats some way for breakfast all the time. And then you are also, and this is my fourth thing, I want you to be, to, to be sure to eat whole grains. Now, if whole is not in front of wheat, then it is not 100% whole wheat. It's white flour. For instance, here is a product that says organic oat brand penne. And if you read the ingredients, the first ingredient, nice, is organic whole wheat durum flour. But the second organic uh, ingredient is organic semolina, which is just white flour. And oftentimes they will have, they are, it's so deceiving. So make sure that if you're eating a white a wheat product, that that hole is in front of it. Now there's tons of other wonderful grains. Quinoa is fabulous, and it comes in all different colors, and it's a really high protein grain. Barley is a fabulous grain, and it has got the same properties as oats, so that it's a good, if, if, you, know, if you don't have oats for breakfast, try this or have it for dinner. Um, so fill your life with these wonderful whole grains. Now, my next, point is beans and lentils. You're going to eat as beans and lentils as much as you can. Fill your salads in the summer with beans and that gives you a whole meal. Fill your life with lentils. I love red lentils because they melt quickly. And, and so you can put, you know, if you um, want to put them in a pasta sauce, nobody would know you have red lentils in there. They melt. So it's great. Or I love them in soups. So it's a really quick way to have lots of beans in your, your life. Um, I would also, and this is my sixth point, is to avoid not, if this is for plant perfect, you are to avoid nuts, but it is all right to eat one or two tablespoons of flaxseed meal or chia seeds or a sprinkle of sesame seeds on things, but you know, not handfuls of seeds and avoid the nuts. Um, my seventh thing is to avoid sugar. And I know that's tough, but once you start doing it, it isn't so hard. And you just get, you get better at it. Now, if you break over and have a big piece of cake, you want the whole cake. But um, I, one of the things I found is if you freeze red grapes, they are really satisfying. That bite of wet, <coughs> sweet grape is wonderful. So, my next thing is to, my eighth thing is to avoid um, salt. And avoiding salt 
also it grows on you if you change i don't like salty things i mean i've never much but i i really can't even eat them now but if you suddenly think of something needs salt try three things first try lemon or lime second try vinegars i mean I have a wonderful pea soup and prevent and reverse heart disease. And it takes sometimes five or six tablespoons of, of, of some kind of a balsamic vinegar before I think it tastes right. But then I love it. Um, so vinegars also are amazing at what they do. And the third thing is try hot sauces. There are so many good Jalulu hot sauces out there that you will, will, will make you love the food. And my, um, my ninth is to drink water do not do not drink your calories chew your food chew your food that means don't juice don't drink juice avoid smoothies I know they've become such a big thing but it is frightening the amount of the way it is so easy to drink your calories and you have no idea how much you're, well, what, exactly what you're drinking. So, I hope that all of you can go forth and uh, just begin to make this one of the healthiest little corners of the whole, all of Canada. Because I, I see all of you, you all just look as if you're ready to go. <laughs> so, I wish you lots of greens and lots of oats and lots of good health.